Hello everyone, I'm John Martinez and this is Learn Together Filmmaking. As you saw in that amazing intro video that I put together for you, we're going to be making a sailing ship. That is right, we're going to be parenting this little ship here to the surface of our ocean and then making it so that it can move along and actually respond to the size and the shape of all the waves and everything. And you can actually apply this effect to a bunch of different things. I just put together this little sphere right here real quick and you can do something similar on here. So as I'm moving it along, obviously this is put together really sloppily and very quickly, but as you can see, you can apply this to other sorts of meshes as well, and then just have them going along with the mesh that you're attaching it to. So that's what we'll be going over today. Let's go ahead and start a new Blender project file. And this one will be quite a bit shorter than usual. Really pretty simple. There's not a lot to go over. Let's create an ocean modifier over here. So just head to our modifier tab and press ocean and now we've just created an ocean. There's really not a whole lot that goes into this. This isn't, you know, an ocean modifier tutorial and everything. So I'm not really going to go over a bunch of stuff in here. Just create your little ocean for the time. Let's create a driver by pressing hashtag frame and then maybe divide by 25 so that it is not, you know, going too fast. And we'll go ahead and enable screencast key so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, so that's good. Our depth is good. Size uh, 0.3. Just make it a little bit smaller so there's a little bit less to deal with around here. Spatial size 65. Just make it a little bigger that way. Go down to our waves. Change that to 0.86. Our smallest waves good. Turbulence good. Wind velocity. Let's lower that somewhat to about 9.31. Give it a little bit more choppiness like that. And then we're going to change our spectrum from turbulent ocean to established ocean. That'll just change that a little bit. And our alignment, we'll bring that up to about right there. That's pretty good. And we'll switch our direction because if, you know, we can play through this right now, we can see kind of how the waves are all moving like that. But let's flip it 180 so that they're traveling in that direction. Add a little bit more chaos. Anyways, this isn't a you know, this isn't an ocean modifier tutorial, so let's just call that good and move on from here. So that ship that I was using was actually a model I got online, and I'll put a link in the description for you to actually go and download it yourself, or you can make your own ship. But for now, let's just go ahead and import that by going import. And I believe it was an OBJ. Let's find out. Let's see. We'll go blender, models, fishing boat. Yep, OBJ. So we import that and it's absolutely gigantic. For some reason it gets imported huge like that. Let's go back down. Now it's negative sized. Uh, scale negative one. And we'll rotate this 180 just because I want it to be going from left to right like that. Scale it down a little bit more. Something like that. And this, you know, you're going to want it kind of proportional to the size of the waves. If your boat is this tiny and your waves are this huge, that's not great. And you also don't want your boat like huge and then the waves are not nothing at all so find a happy middle ground make your boat a roughly approximately appropriate size so the way we're actually going to be doing this now that we've kind of got everything set up is we're going to be doing parenting that's right that thing that i covered in the tutorial not that long ago uh links down below whatever you can click on it up here in the right but anyway so we're going to be parenting our ship to our plane right here and then using the plane to kind of create the motion path on the water for the ship. So I'll just go ahead and uh, do that for you. First thing we want to do is go into edit mode on our plane and go select one face. Make sure that you have the merge vertices by distance or auto merge, whatever it is up here in the upper right. Click that, turn it on. And then if we scale zero, then it'll just create a triangle out of all that and it'll get rid of one of those vertices. So now that we've done that, let's head over to overhead view by pressing seven, scale it along the Y axis a little bit because we want it to be kind of within the bounds of the ship a little bit. And then we'll scale it along X so that it is roughly fitting in. It, you want it to be a little bit smaller than your ship. So maybe let's scale it in a little bit like that. You don't want it to be exactly the same size, especially since the ship is you know, curved. You don't want any part of that sticking out like that. And then what we're going to do is head over to one of our side views and then move our plane up 
so that it's going to be roughly there. And this is going to kind of determine like how low in the water our ship is sitting because, you know, if it's like way up here uh, towards the top of the ship, then when this is on the surface of the water, then the ship is going to be like the top of the ship is going to be on the water. So you want it to be kind of, you know, not at the very bottom of the ship, but not too high. That's probably good where it is right now. So we'll select our ship and then we will select our plane by control selecting there and then we'll press control P and then for parenting, you're not going to set it to object or any of that stuff. You're going to set it to vertex triangle. And this way, as we discussed in the parenting video, as I move the vertices around for our thing, it actually is able to move around the ship as well. So now that we've got the ship parented to the plane, we can you know move around the plane and the ship will stay with it. But how do we actually get the plane to go onto the surface and map with the surface? Well, for that, we're going to be using a shrink wrap modifier. So let's go ahead and add that on here, set our target to the cube or our ocean that we have here. And you know, right off the bat, it looks really bad. It's all skewed. And if we move it around, it's very choppy and everything like that. So we need to change our wrap method from near a surface point to project. And what this will do is that it'll look at our plane and then kind of just project it along any given axis until it contacts the uh, surface that it's being projected on to just straight down. Uh, in this case though, it's set to positive. We need to switch it to negative. And now that we do that, it will just project it onto the plane like that. So now as we move it around, you can see that it's actually kind of moving with our ocean like that. And it's a lot smoother than it was before for sure. And it's not skewed nearly as much. It's still a little bit skewed. Like, you know, if we move it like this, you can kind of, you know, it's not terrible, but you can kind of see a little bit of a skew. But, you know, now we've got something that goes on the water and here's where the skew is a little bit. You can see right there, the ship is kind of slanting a little bit forward and backward, not just tilting, it's actually slanting. And if we actually leave this in place, let's say we leave this in place, then, you know, this, ship is staying in one spot right there and it's kind of responding to the waves a little bit. And this is kind of similar to how you'd see it done in other tutorials when they're just leaving it in one place. But the benefit of the method that we're using here is that since we're doing it with a secondary object, a kind of intermediate object here, and we can actually move it around, we can add a keyframe here at the beginning and then go to the end and let's just scooch it along the X axis and add another keyframe there. So now as it's moving along, uh, we can actually press play and the ship will move along. Obviously it's, you know, kind of going under like that. And this is where, you know, having the ship on a different axis is going to come into play, or not axis, a uh, different level. So if we, you know, kind of go in here and we can actually see switching back and forth, we can just disable it for a second. And we know that the ship is a little bit too low here. So we can just move the ship up a little bit and then head back to our plane re-enable that and then it's still over the water a little or under the water a little bit but it's a little bit better and you know you can play with it a little bit maybe if we let's say we disable that for a second and then we can come in here and unparent it real quick so we'll alt p and clear and keep transformation you want to keep transformation for this one because we've moved it now so we'll do that and then let's shrink our uh triangle a little bit so that it's not affecting you know the outside so much and it's more responsive in the middle of the ship so we'll do that then reparent it vertex triangle and then now if we re-enable that then we can play through and it's a little bit better as well not actually not so much right there anyways you get the point that allows you to actually do something like that so how do we address the skewing of our ship. We don't want it to kind of, you know, going between these these frames right here, you can kind of see it tilting a little bit. We don't want it to skew like that. We have our motion and, you know, we're relatively happy with that. Let's something like that. There we go. I think that's relatively good. So why is it skewing? Well, if we actually, let's hide our ocean for a second. Let's disable the shrink wrap modifier so we can see what's going on. Our ship is being mapped to each of the individual vertices. It's kind of like when you're using armatures and everything in that, you know, there's different weights to it based on the distance from the vertex that we're doing. And that's what's causing it to skew is whenever our triangle here is not staying as a flat plane, 
but say it's getting rotated a little bit, kind of like that, it's getting, when the triangle itself is getting skewed, basically. So we want to kind of remove that aspect from this, but we can't do that from the shrink wrap modifier or anything like that. So we have to do it on our ship itself. So what we need to do is re-enable that, let's bring back our ocean, and then we can actually click on our ship, press F3, and then you know type in bake action, and then I'll bring up this option right here. So you can click bake action like that, and then click visual keying. And what this will do is it'll take the motion of the ship, you know, after our modifiers and everything, basically what you would see on screen if we were to play through this. So take that motion, use that to build our keyframes and then clear parents. And that way it's no longer going to be parented to our cube and then press okay. And then if you do that, it'll take a second. It'll have to calculate the motion for every single one. But now that we've done that, if we head over to our animation tab, switch over to the graph editor, if I can just click that, you can see that we have keyframes for all of these different parameters over here. If we expand that, we have location, rotation, scale. We have keyframes for all of that stuff right now. And one thing that does not get baked over into the keyframes is skew because that's not you know one of these parameters. There is no skew on here. So that part of it gets removed. And now if we were to actually uh, go back over to layout and play through it, you can see it still maintains all of the motion and everything, but the skew is gone from the ship. Now it's just like that. And then if you wanna make it you know, a little bit cleaner or smoother even, cause if like we actually look at this, you can see it's, oh, it's not that jittery. It's kind of has a little bit of a rocking motion to it, but you can actually clean that up a little bit as well. So let's head back over to our animation tab and then we can look at our keyframes and kind of remove some of these. So one thing we don't need to have a whole lot of keyframes for is our Y location, because you know, when we were keyframing our triangle, we were just having it move only along the X axis. So let's hide everything and then bring back our Y location. Then if we uh, zoom in, I'm holding control and then using the middle mouse to kind of drag and expand that a little bit you can kind of see how it's moving. It's really not doing a whole lot here. So we can clean that up a little bit by scaling along Y like this, uh, hovering over the graph editor, S, Y, and then scale that in a little bit so that it's not uh, varying so much because maybe you want a little bit in there. And then you can press F3 and then type in decimate and then click this decimate ratio. And then as I move my mouse from left to right, you can see how it kind of removes keyframes from that. So we can just actually bring it pretty far, uh, maybe leave it a few keyframes. So 94, that's probably a pretty good amount. That gets rid of a lot of keyframes and it smooths it out a little bit when you do that. Changes the motion a little bit too, but you know we're not really gonna see this a whole lot anyways. And then for scale, actually, yeah, let's look at our scale. We don't want any keyframes for this whatsoever. We and I just want to, you know, we don't want our ship to change size at all because that'd just be a little bit weird. So let's just actually, all of them are selected, all of our keyframes. You can press A to make sure they're selected, press X and delete keyframes. And now whatever size our ship is, it's going to stay that size. And we've gotten rid of all the keyframes over here. Now for location wise, this one, let's look at that a little bit. It should be pretty linear. It might, you know, speed up and slow down a little bit, but we're not gonna be able to tell that. For a Z location, this is where you might actually see, you know, a little bit more variation as it's going over the waves and maybe you want to smooth this out a little bit so you can decimate this as well. That'll smooth it out some. You just kind of find a good number there. 86 is probably decent. All right, so now we do that and it should be a little bit smoother. And then you can repeat as necessary for your X and Y and Z rotation, but that is how you create a sailing ship on the water. And you can do this for all sorts of different meshes. Works best on flat planes like this, you know, oceans, things like that. And obviously we haven't done anything with like, you know, creating spray on the front of it or a wake in the trailing the ship or anything like that. This is all just about the mechanics of creating a ship that can move on the water, or anything moving along any surface. You could use this for, I don't know, cars driving over terrain too. That would probably also work for that. Anyways, that's all I've got for you now. So I will see you on the next video. I'm John Martinez, and this has been Learn Together Filmmaking.